Kiambu 7, Busia 5, Muranga, Kilefe, Kajiado, Migori 2. In each of those, Mashakos and Muranga County have one each. In terms of the sub-counties, Westerns in Nairobi is the lead today with 13, Embakasi with 10, Makadara with 9, Langata 8, Embakasi East and Roesabu have each got 5, while Starehe follows with 4 among other counties that have registered sub-counties that have registered various numbers. The 27 cases in Mombasa are essentially from uh, Mvita with 16, Kisauni with 6, Nyali with 3. We are delighted to report that we have discharged 40 patients from various hospitals bringing the total of the recoveries to 1,326. Unfortunately, we have also lost one more patient to the disease, bringing the total number of those who have perished and succumbed to, vi to this virus to 105. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families and friends during this very difficult period. Fellow Kenyans, Today, we celebrate the day of the African child. Each year, on the 16th of June, the African Union and its member states observe the day of the African child as a commemoration of the 16th June 1976 student uprising in Soweto, South Africa, where students who marched in protest against apartheid, inspired education, and were brutally murdered. Yesterday, I spoke at length on the issue of our children's diet and nutrition as part of prevention and promotion of good health in our children, and also as part of building our immunity against um, this disease, particularly amongst our children. It is important to also address the matters related to treatment and cure of whatever they might get, including COVID-19. To elaborate more on this matter, I have the head, Directorate of Pre Preventive and Promotive Health, Dr. Pacifica Onyancha here with me. She will give details on the ministry's position on child health. And I would like to give her this opportunity to just uh, speak very briefly and explain to you what we are doing as a ministry in terms of pediatric care and our concern for our children. Rest we think that our attention has been drawn to COVID-19 to the extent that we have forgotten about the other issues. So let me invite you, Dr. Ari, to just speak to that for a minute. Behind. To start from where you have left is that uh, as a, a member of the African Union, the theme for this year's uh, celebration of the Day of uh, the African Child is access to child-friendly justice system in Africa as adopted by the African Union Executive Council during its 34th ordinary session held on the 7th of August, February, uh, sorry, on, the, on, the, uh, uh, on February last year. The Ministry of Health, in collaboration with the, min uh, the other ministries of labor and social services, has supported various institutions as a way of celebrating this day to give the children institutions uh, 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 child-friendly, uh, uh, to provide menstrual hygiene products as a way of dignifying our girls uh, during this period. As a ministry related to improving child survival, the ministry has continuously implemented high impact interventions anchored in its, in, in its policies, strategies, and guidelines. 
I just want to highlight a few of the high impact activities that we have been doing even in the, middle, uh, in, in, the, in the face of COVID. One of the high impact intervention is immunization. Immunization coverage has been affected, of course, during this pandemic, but there are, uh, there are, uh, there are uh, ways of uh, mitigating against this. We know that immunization is a very powerful prevention of child, uh, child diseases such as measles, polio, mm -hmm. and the rest. So having realized that immunization is coming down because of the COVID, we have enhanced IPC uh, practices at the child welfare clinics to make sure that the caregivers are assured of their children coming for immunization without having to get the COVID. We have made sure that the scheduling of appointment is in such a way that we avoid crowding, especially in the public facilities. And also, we have made sure that those staffs who are attending the children in these clinics have their temperatures taken every morning to make sure that we remove, in, and if anybody having a fever or a cough is not allowed to uh, 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 attend to the children. A second Im high impact intervention is promotion of exclusive breastfeeding. And I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank the mothers who are uh, exclusively breastfeeding up to six months as it is in the guidelines. In this phase of COVID, I want to encourage mothers, even when you are found to be uh, COVID positive, to continually breastfeed, but make sure that you are putting on, you, you wear a mask, and, uh, and, uh, and then you have minimal contact with the child, meaning that when you are not breastfeeding, it is good for that child to be taken care by somebody else, not you, to avoid uh, uh, infection. The other thing is actually we have availed child-friendly formulations for treatment and, uh, of diarrhea and pneumonia, as you add that we have to also address the issue of treatment and care for those who get sick. Infant mortality rate is one of the high uh, in, in our country and in Africa as a whole. We have put measures whereby we have people, uh, healthcare work, workers who have been capacity built to make sure that they provide working, uh, provide, they, 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 they are given capacity building in uh, managing the newborn units to make sure that the, the outcome of the sick neonates is, uh, is good. And also we have scaled up one of a very high impact intervention called kangaroo mother care for those who are born premature. And lastly, that we use cloexidine in the cord care that uh, reduces uh, infections during this very fragile time. I just want to make an uh, appeal to the mothers in terms of mask, uh, wearing masks in the COVID. Children are very fragile, and I want to say that during this time of COVID, children under two years are not recommended to put on a mask because they actually re reduce the, the, the oxygen supply. The under five uh, year children in, pers in, in his personal space, that is in a car, home, should also not wear masks because this is to avoid suffocation because they, they may tend to sleep. I'm also saying that health, as our uh, cabinet secretary has said, is very key as a form of prevention against not only COVID, but any other disease, and of course, exercises is also recommended. Finally, for those who are taking care of our children, their mental status have to be okay because if you are not okay, then you are likely not to know how to take care of the children. And therefore, we are requesting that if you feel you need psychosocial support, we have been saying that we have elaborate uh, uh, services to attend to it and therefore seek help so that you don't uh, uh, injure or uh, affect your child as you take care of them, both the parents and the caregivers. Thank you so much. Asante uh, sana, Daktari. Ni kuongeza tu kidogo, ni seme ya kwamba wenye mahoteli ambao leo hii tumewaruhusu kuongeza masaa ile wanafanya kazi, wenye mahoteli na wateja wao ni lazima wafuate ile mikakati ambao tumeweka ya kusaidia na kuzuia hii mambo ya ukimwi kwa hivyo sio mambo ya ukimwi wa virusi virusi ya ya covid-19 kwa hivyo sisi tunge tungetimiza ya kwamba hao wale ambao wanafanya kazi katika hiyo mahoteli 
tafathalini mujaribu sana mfuata hizo sheria kwa sababu nyinyi ndio mnaweza kuambukiza wale watenja ambao wanakuja hiyo hotelini na imefanywa hiyo im, 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 kitu ni, ki, ni mambo ambayo tume, tumejionea sisi wenyewe kama mkikumbuka kidogo wakati kulikuwa na quarantine mahotelini kuna hoteli mbili ambazo zili, um, wafanyikazi wa hoteli wa mahoteli ndio ndio waliumbukiza wale ambao walikuja hiyo quarantine kwa hivyo tungependa sana eh, nyinyi ambao tumeruhusu wafanye hiyo kazi na pia vile vile wenye mahoteli wasaidie sana wenye mahoteli umsaidie sana wafanyikazi ndio waweze kufika nyumbani wasije sana tena tukasema waendelee mpaka saa moja unusu alafu kutoka hapo mnawaambia sasa ni kusafisha kutoka hapo sasa sijui ni kupika ile ya kesho leo alafu sasa wanashelewa eh? wakifika huko barabarani wanakutana na polisi kwa sababu wamevunja sheria vile vile tumefahamishwa ya kwamba kuna watu wanavunja sheria ya kutoka ama kuingia hapa Nairobi bila sababu maalum tumejionea sisi wenyewe juzi tulipokuwa kwenye ndarwa wakati wa kurudi unaona mangari ni mengi sana kwa hivyo tunawaomba hao watu au watu wanafanya hiyo kuvunja sheria tunawaomba jameni tunawahimiza nyinyi ndio ambao mtaeneza hii mambukizi ya virusi huko upande wa mashambani mkifanya hivyo tafadhalini tukwamishe hiyo tabia vile vile tunaambiwa hati ya kwamba wale ambao wanatoka Nairobi kuelekea Kago wale wana Kago hati mnasimamishwa huko na kule mnaripishwa shilingi moja kama toll station hakuna toll station ya health eh? wale ambao wanafanya hiyo vile vile hatua itashukuliwa na hiyo pesa mtupatie ndio tupate kununua madawa na mambo kama hayo lakini mtatupatia mkiwa pahali pengine ambapo sio pazuri sana so i just want to once again thank uh, kenyans for following the rules it is because of this adoption of the new protocols it is because of the adoption of the new behavior that we are able now to continue opening up the economy we would not be able to open the restaurants if the restaurant uh, owners and those who work in restaurants were not behaving in a manner that they are we have not noticed any positive cases because of opening the restaurants because they are observing the rules let me emphasize bars are not open bars are not open we are talking about the restaurants so that can people can be able to get something to eat even as they head for home in the event that that is what they wish to do and also to give a bit of a lifeline to our restaurants and tourism facilities because we know that they are they are going through a very difficult time and we appreciate the sacrifice that they are making asante sana okay good afternoon waziri uh, just a question we've recorded 105 cases of corona of, yes emmanuel to from ktn news just a question uh, we've recorded 105 deaths so far what are the mortality data of these people what were the underlying conditions before they died and number two uh, the medical practitioners have continued to ask for ppe's are they just making noise or they have the adequate uh, PPEs that they are asking for. That's all. Thank you. Asante sana. Please, if you know the medical person who is asking for the PPE, please send them to me personally. Because as far as I'm concerned, we have given just about everybody who needs a PPE a PPE. Now, let's get it straight. PPEs are not being distributed, you know, just about to everybody everywhere. You know, even those in the offices here, you're expecting, no, that's not what we are doing. We are giving PPEs to medical health workers who are on the front line and who need them. So if you hear somebody saying that um, they are not getting PPEs, that is entirely not true. We have enough PPEs in the country. And that's why I'm saying, if you know who specifically, please send them to me. 
and I'll deal with the issue. All right? And if they tell you that they don't want to talk to me, then tell them, like they say in weddings, forever, let them keep their peace, because it is not true. Now, as far as um, the 105 people who have succumbed are concerned, we have uh, about 42% of the cases, it is almost 50-50 at the moment, of uh, people who have got other underlying cases, comorbidities of all sorts, particularly diabetes. Diabetes is very heavy on the, um, on the list of the causes of, uh, of, the, of the disease. Among those with underlying cases, there are also very many cases of, uh, of cancer. Uh, there, are, uh, there are also cases of high blood pressure. But uh, we also have people who are, who, have, who are not sick before and who had no underlying, underlying issues. Yes, next. Good evening, Waziri. My name is Jane Goiri from NTV. There are two senior officials from the Ministry of Health who you have deployed to KMTC and MTRH, respectively. What happens should they decline the deployment again? Thank you. You know, you know, Jane Goiri, you have spoken about that issue before. And uh, the, the, it, it is not two officials we have deployed. We have now deployed more than 35 people into various uh, areas and various transfers. As we try to reform uh, the ministry, we obviously, we will send people to areas where we feel they can be most effective and most efficient. If we didn't think they were good enough for where they were going, then we'd be getting rid of them. But we are not, um, uh, we are moving people because they must move to where we believe they are most effective and most efficient. Next. Thank and you. by the way, there is a contract of employment. As I had said earlier, a while back, you, we all have a contract of employment. So your contract of employment says you can work for NTV in Nairobi and you can work for NTV in Mombasa. So if you are told deployed to Mombasa and you feel that you don't want to work in Mombasa, then there is a natural thing, you know, it's normal practice, is you give your letter of resignation, alafu you come to the Ministry of Health or somewhere else. Thank you, Waziri. My name is Abdiaziz Ashim from Ebru TV. Uh, just you have extended the operating hours for hotels. There are hotels in the informal settlements. They're saying some of the measures that you have placed they cannot contend with. The next best thing they can do is place water taps around their hotel so that people can wash their hands. They're saying that it will cost them a lot to take temperatures or test uh, some of the customers that are coming in. Well, first and foremost, we are not, they are not testing customers who are coming in, just for correction. No, 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 no restaurant is testing customers who are coming in. What they are doing is taking temperatures. And uh, you do need to take temperatures of persons coming in. And we are quite happy to have uh, water taps. There is nothing wrong with having, uh, as long as people can wash their hands, we see no reason why um, that cannot suffice. But I think that at um, every level, to take every case with its own merit, the easiest thing to do is to work at, with, the, with the public health officers who are there to give the minimum that you must have. Let's, 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 let's not forget, there is a minimum that you must have in order for you to be able to reopen the, the restaurant. Otherwise, if, it, if, if we didn't do that, then what would happen is that everybody would just open and then we start the spread of the disease. And that we cannot do. Point one. Good evening, Waziri. My name is Graham Kajilo from The Standard. Uh, my question is with regards to the uh, document that was released by WHO on asymptomatic cases. Yesterday, when you were in Yandaro, you did mention that people who will be released from hospital who are um, for home based care will be uh, tested to detect their viral load. I would like to find out do we have any specific test? that we can use to determine the viral load of COVID-19 in a patient? Um, we, yeah, of, co of course they do. Of course they do, Graham. But I did not say that they will be tested for their viral load. What we said is that beyond a certain time, beyond a certain period, WHO has proposed about nine to 10 days, the viral load is low enough for people to be released and they cannot infect others. We, on our part, have adopted a 14-day a 14-day period, at which point that uh, we, we will 
own conditions. We will own conditions. Release individuals uh, for home care. I think that um, uh, we, the last time we stood here, Dr. Amoth explained very, very clearly what the conditions of uh, being released are. We have also developed uh, protocols for those who will be able to take care of them in their own homes so that um, it is something that is managed and guided, even though it is at home, with Ministry of Health support. Community health workers and uh, public health workers are not going to be very far from those families. Oh, my, other, my other issue is also around those uh, issues of uh, asymptomatic. Is the, are, the, are, the, are the new findings from asymptomatic cases the reason why you've decided you'll be testing health workers only for 14 days and no more tests, even if, um, unless they, uh, they it is part of it. it. It is part of it. It is part of it in the sense that, um, number one, it is very expensive. You are aware that uh, testing is extremely expensive. Number two, uh, the determination by the health team, even with the, within the Ministry of Health, is that uh, and, uh, if somebody has tested negative, unless they show symptoms or unless they exhibit behavior, behavior that, that suggests that they might be positive, then uh, there is really no, uh, no need to test them. And yes, at that point, they will be completely asymptomatic and there is no cause to cause um, a, a test. Thank you all very much indeed.